So we got a um, Dave and uh, Jimmy from uh, Catch and Tackle, and they're going to talk first. And then uh, Jared from uh, J Taylor Custom Rods will be up and talk about his, how he uh, makes his fishing rods here, uh, fly rods, afterwards. So pretty cool stuff. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, Dave, Jimmy, take it away. Right on. Thanks, yep. Charlie. Yeah. Well, and starting in a business with uh, plastics. We start uh, with our, obviously, the plastic, and it comes in a big jug, and we mix that up, and we uh, put that in the park wave and get it to where it changes forms. So I, want, I brought some stuff, molds that was already shot, but uh, the idea of this is the injector, and you take that, pull it into the, the plastic, and then you just put it right in the top, and inject the mold and the plastic, just like that. So. Then after it cools, the clamps come off, and I'll show you what it looks like from there. This is our money worm. This man won more money off this worm, so we named it the money worm. <laughs> that's why it's named the money worm. So that's what you get from when it cools. Money worm. The other one is a rock crawl. And it looks like that, and it just comes right on all out. That's just like the money worm. Same principle, pop it off, and there you got your rock crawl. How long did they take to set up? Um, right at first, like a minute or two. I mean, it's right. Oh, wow. And then as the mold gets hot after it keeps injecting, you gotta wait a little bit for it to cool. So it takes just a little bit longer. Don't just let it touch it when it's hot. Burn <laughs> <laughs> that real quick. It's, it's a little bit of a scar every once in a while, but then this part gets thrown back into the discard pot and it gets remelted. So a little waste of it there. But I wanted to talk about these two baits for sure. Um, Cause when Jimmy will illustrate um, two ways of fishing, these uh, the Ned Rig and Shaky Hicks. So those are our two heads that we pour also. Um, Jimmy's the lead man, so he can talk a little bit about that if he wants to, as far as, since we're not, we won't have much to show, but um, it, it's a great effective way of bass fishing. We've got two different heads. We pour all these. We pour all our own plastic, all our own lead. This is our Shaky Head. <clears throat> it comes with a four rock Gamagetsu hook. Anything that we make comes with this stuff. I don't use jug because if I'm going to use it, if it doesn't get sold, I'm going to fish with it. This one's got a little screw lock on it. And I will show you one of our baits right here. This is one we make. This is called the Dragon Bug. And this is one of our favorite ways to fish it. You just put it up here on this screw lock. I don't know if you can see that or not. But it's real easy. It just screws right up on here. Screw it down tight against the head. And when you come with your hook, I do what's called a text pose. So I'll take the bait and I'll measure where I want my hook to go at with my thumb. In the bait, I come all the way through with the hook. I pinch this up right here. Now your hook point is buried. It's completely weedless. With our stand up head, It'll sit like this. All of our plastic floats. We don't put any salt in our plastic. Salt adds density, and that's what floats. The big companies do it for two reasons. One, um, it does have it does have taste to it. When we pour it, we put scent into it. When we pack it, we put more scent into it. If you open up a package of our baits, they stink. Every night, packing night comes home and makes you want garlic bread. <laughs> so when you use a stand-up head, this will make this bait stand up because it floats. 
Another new head we come out with this year is our little weedless Ned head. It's two off D and C hook. And you do the same thing just like you would if you was Texas rigging it. I come in here just past where the barb of the hook is. Come back out. Slide your bait up. Tie it against this head. And I'll do the same thing. Pinch it up. Pop it through. Carry that hook point back into plastic. Now it's completely weedless. And Ned fishing, <clears throat> the Ned rig is a really, really popular thing right now. Everybody does it, and it catches a lot of fish. I was not a fan of it at all until he schooled me. At, <laughs> where was it? Was that Schaefer? <laughs> Schaefer or Freeman, one of them. After about four fish, I finally looked at him and said, you got any more of those? <laughs> this, is, this is getting a little bit ridiculous. So it's definitely, it's a very effective, awesome way to catch fish. Little finesse thing. Um, just trying to think of what else. It's... The way we poured that, our head is actually it's a little bit different. I'll file this head down, make it a little bit more flatter, so when it's like the same deal, it'll float. It'll always stand up. Now, will it roll? If you hit rocks and stuff, it'll roll, but it's always going to stand up. With our bait here, this is what we call the fish stick. The little split tail on the end, it just sits there and sits, shakes and shakes and shakes. Fish can't stand it. We've got a few more baits that are our own baits, stuff that we've designed. This one is the catch and crawl. This was... Our, one of our first designs on it. It has amazing action in the water. It's got these two flappers. It's probably hard to see, but what we've done on the crawls right here, on the outside of the claw, we made it thicker. Inside of the claw is pretty thin, so when that goes down through the water, those claws are just doing that. Same deal, it'll float. Probably our favorite ways to fish would be on a Texas rig, flipping it. Or taking um, a Carolina rig, it's an awesome bait on a Carolina rig. I've used this as a jig trailer. Uh, we actually have, I've got some heads, I don't know if I have them here, but same deal, I'll put it on a, on a jig head and fish it just like I would a jig without the skirt. Come in, slide it up, bury that hook point in there. And our plastic is soft enough, yet durable enough. It was something we worked really hard on, getting the plastic just right, so whenever we would catch a fish, that these, these arms won't just rip off first fish. Now, will they rip off? We all know they will, but you might get, you know, I'm not going to tell you you're going to catch 50 fish without ripping, because everybody knows that's a lie. But that's just one way we do it. Uh, another bait we come up with, and it's probably, would you say, maybe number one seller, mm -hmm. is the Weed Monkey. This was about nine months worth of work getting this bait just right yeah um a lot of trips up to alexandria <laughs> yes a lot of trips back and forth getting it okay let's file this down let's shave this let's add the, the hook slot to it um it's a bait we're really really happy with and it probably is our number one seller we actually when we first got the mold back and i've got the picture and i swear on all my guns this is the truth we shot it what six eight times and we kind of were looking at each other like all right let's run to the pond and test it real quick that was a testing product so we, we, yeah, we had to do a little product testing my very first flip i knew there was a log in the water so i knew there'd probably be a fish bite but i just flipped it out on the log after about two or three cranks a little fish went up and grabbed it i can show you the picture i still got the bait that's at home and it's on my wall of all my bait collection stuff right there so this is one we're really really happy with one that took a lot of time to to get just right and it's the same deal it's got the outer the claws right here a little thicker when it goes down it just makes all kinds of movement and I, we fish this any way you can think of we throw it on a texas rig i'll bite it down a little bit um, and use it as a jig trailer one of the great things about this with the jig trailer is it really bulks up that jig so you can take a smaller jig you can take a a three eighths or even a half ounce and you just you put the I didn't hook that one very well but you get the idea. It really bulks up that jig. So now you've got the profile of a one ounce or an ounce and a half jig throwing the big jig, which is my favorite way to fish, but you've got the slower fall rate of a half ounce plus whenever it lands, it's gonna stand up, it blows your jig skirt out. It's one of our we're just really happy with it. 
And at one of the shows that we did, one of the pros come by and he, he gives us give us a thumbs up on the bait. So yeah, we were pretty excited about that. Cool. that so. BASS Elite. He come by and I just showed it to him. kind of a friend of ours, and we uh, was like, yeah, you guys got it going on there. Is that a hollow body bait or is it a solid body? It's solid. It that we did put a hook slot in here. We use depending on what I'm doing, if I'm gonna be flipping all day or punching mats, I'm gonna use a five aught EWG hook. I want a big hook, big heavy, heavy super water or super line hook. Um, I put a four aught in it. My personal preference is just a five. You can fish it with a four or a five. And that's why we added that hook slot so there's not so much so much meat for that to go through. Another real popular bait, it'd probably be a tie between these three right here, which one's the, the most popular, um, is our little flipping bug right here. And there is absolutely nothing you cannot do with this bait. When it's poured like Dave showed you in the mold, it all comes together. You can pull the claws apart, there's little tentacles on here, you can pull those apart. It's got the flapping arms on the side, you can pull those apart. My favorite way to fish this this would be my favorite jig trailer. Of all the jig trailers we make, <coughs> or creature baits, this thing on a jig is money. On a big jig like this, if I'm flipping or throwing a big football head deep in rocks, like I've got what this one is here is a big football head, awesome jig trailer. Now when I swim it, when I fish it, is if I'm flipping or doing rocks, I'll lay it, I guess what I'd say horizontal. If this was a swim jig, or even a, a vibrating jig, a chatterbait. I like to take it and turn it or vertical. And I'll come out just below where those second arms are still. This one's kind of getting ripped up because I've done this several times, but I'll lay it so it lays flat like this. It swims a little bit better, it comes through grass a lot better that way. I'm trying to think of what else. We flip this thing. Our Carolina rig is good. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, see, it, his favorite is the flipping bug. My my favorite is the, the river. I, I, I love it. It's got a crawl for any type of trailer, and especially a chatterbait. This is my go to bait right here. For his, his is the yeah, <clears throat> we each have our opinion on that. But they both <laughs> catch fish, so that's what that's the good thing about it. What way the chatterbait are you throwing that on? Half ounce. Half? Mm -hmm. That's the only yeah. size I throw. I, I, I got some 3 8, but they stay in the box. I just half because you can get longer casts mm -hmm. and you cover flash for water with cast and retrieve and it stays just right at the right depth level. And uh, you can, like I said, it's, that's my go to is a half. Definitely a half. Th the only time I throw a 3 8 is if I'm in really thicker grass and it's kind of up to the surface and I want to keep it up a little bit higher without having to speed up my reel on that 15 pound sunline sniper. Uh, next bait, the most popular, is the Helgamite. And this little thing here, when we first got this mold, we released it last year, we couldn't keep up with it. First show we had, we sold out. Every show we did with this bait, we sold out because we couldn't pour it fast enough. It was plenty of long nights sitting out in the shop, freezing to death, trying to get these things poured and get packs and packs. Those would be our most, most popular baits. Now we do have, uh, it's not here yet, we're gonna have a hook for the weed monkey that's gonna be dynamite. It's something we played around with, we tested it. We, I've got the mold, it's, it's, it's on the way. Um, hopefully, our um, next show is in Fort Wayne, it's the 20... 26, 27, 28th of February. Yeah, should have that at the Fort Wayne show as long as, you know, as long as it gets in the mail. I'm hoping, I really hope it's here by this weekend, but if not, um, <laughs> the new hook's gonna be cool. It's actually, it's like a weighted, almost like a swim bait hook. It's going to be weighted. So when this thing comes down, it won't be so much like you're, like you're flipping with the Texas rig where it's going to come straight down. It's going to come almost at an angle like that. So those tentacles are just going to flap, flap, flap. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be able to come through rocks, through weeds. It's going to be cool. We've got another big football head idea. That same deal. <clears throat> For this bait, we're really for all of our baits, we're going to have it in a half ounce, a three eighths ounce. I don't know if we're going to do a quarter or not, but it's going to be a screw lock. It's going to be similar to the 
to our to our shaking head. It's going to have a screw lock on it. It's just going to be a big football head. You know, five lock must add ultra point hook. He's not camera ready. Come on. We're in the middle of the show here, and, and we're doing this. But yeah, football head's going to be cool. Same deal. Should have that next couple weeks. We'll get that poured. Uh, I'm trying to think if you got anything else in here. He's already showed off the money worm. This is a new one for this year. This is our big 10 inch worm, or not 10 inch, 8 and a half inch worm. What we call trick worm. Same deal. I wish I'd have brought the tank because when you drop this in the tank, it just floats. It's going to stand up there. I can't, yeah, here's a 10 inch worm. Now I've got this on, a, on one of our big heads, big half ounce head. This is how I like to fish a big worm. I'd really put it on a head, a shaky head, or a stand-up head, something like that, instead of Texas rig. I don't want that action, but that's our big 10-inch curly tail. We've got all the good colors. This one's watermelon red, watermelon red. That's our black and blue, which I know I'm kind of personal to. I think our black and blue is one of the, one of the coolest colors ever. It really, it, I mean, you can really see the blue in it. We've got green pumpkin. The standby. This was Dave's creation. Right, I gotta give him all the credit on this one. Yeah, it's the last show in uh, Nashville. We picked these piece back. Everybody was there for the fire crawl because that's that's the new the hot color the uh, chatterbait the, the jackhammer Z man. I mean everybody wants the the fire crawl. So my red crawl last year was when a. Um, Scott Falls, Nick Falls at Get Jiggy come to me and says, you know, hey, can you create a red bait? And he pointed, you know, I said, okay, sure can. What kind of color are you looking at? And he said, well, see that broomstick? And that broomstick, I want that color in the broomstick. <laughs> so a little bit of engineering and and, and there's my uh, red crawl. So he's real happy with this one. And like yeah, I said, it's, it's sold a lot of bait so far. So we're pouring hard on that for uh, Fort Wayne. We had a box full of red crawl, and I think we had two packs left. Yeah. Uh, it was just two packs of it, that, that was all that was left. And we just sold those that they'd been open another hour, but we were ready to get home. We do have a stick, just like everybody else. It's a five inch stick. We're actually rigging it. It's full of salt. It'll float when it floats down. It's gonna. And we have a chest stick, and I was, I thought. Yeah, there's a chest. Oh, we have a chest stick. Imagine this with that tail on it. That's what the shad stick is. That's a deal. Like, there we go. Yeah, that's kind of what the shad stick looks like. I don't know if we got one in here or not. I don't think so. Yes. There we go. There's the shad stick. Very effective. Um, like I said, all our base float, but you can really get long casts with this, and it's almost kind of like a like a fluke, you know, when you fish it kind of darks around. But I thought it was real good. Same deal, throw it on our shaving heads. Uh, Texas rig, Carolina rig. Any way you can think of our baits, we fish them. Just about any way possible. Let's see what else we got. Ooh, here's a color. Prong, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's our prong. That's a color we come up with. It's kind of hard to see, but when you look at the light, it'll actually kind of change colors. This is a this is a, this is an Indiana color. This works up here. You put this in the money worm. Everybody else is fishing for second place. You do it only. Love yeah. the prong color. And I was uh, fishing with a good friend of ours that uh, uh, met him down at Monroe uh, in the summer last year, and um, he was not a big Carolina guy. He he's more of a wacky rig. He loves to throw wacky rig. And I said we were at uh, it was pretty good drop off. And I was Carolina. The prong on the money worm, and uh, I lost. I know everybody says when you lost the, lose a fish, it must be ten pounds, but it was probably good about six. I mean, she really pulled, and uh, it snapped my line, and then uh, and then I actually lost another one, probably four, four, four and a half on that. And I was um, with the prong color on the money worm, and so we got. I got back home, and it, it was uh, probably within an hour, and he placed an order for some prong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when he got home when he was placing We do have a little Ned worm. That's the same deal like everybody else has. 
I turn my little net worm just like that. I have a little more, I like the fish stick. I like it because it's a little bit longer, a little more action, but the, it's the same deal. On our weedless net head, we have an A316 and quarter ounce heads. We pour them all, we check them all. It's a DMC, it's a good hook. We don't put, we don't put junk in, in our stuff. Our stuff, our heads may cost a little bit more. That's because I'm going to use a DMC or a Mustad or a Gammy. I'm going to use good hooks because what we don't sell goes in the boat. That uh, that Ned worm, mm -hmm. that three and a half, four inches ish. The one you just picked up. Three. Oh yeah, this. this one. It's almost three. Yeah, it's, it's almost three. three. Okay. That's it. Here in the corner. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's almost three. The fish stick. It's three and a half. It's like three and a half. It's just a little bit longer with the tail. I like this one more than this one. I was not a Ned Reed fan to begin with, so I feel like I'm gonna catch a little bit better fish on blue this. profile. Yeah. But I'm the opposite, of course, so that's because that's what I took into school on was the, the Yeah, yeah, so. it was it was about four fish that I finally I broke. It's like, all right. Get me those on. <laughs> <laughs> you win, I'm done, all right. You you got it. But yeah, that's that's really all we do. Got a lot of baits that are ours. Uh, this little guy right here is the rock crawler. Same deal on a shaky head, flip it, Carolina rigging it. It's a good jig trailer. I've used it as a swim jig trailer, chair bait trailer, kind of like a, a brush hog type of deal. Would be our same, would be our brush hog. We don't make a brush hog, but that would be close to it. The hand would get skinny. You know, smell that garlic or that's not. But the baits we pour, you know, we try to give you an opportunity to fish in different ways. Yeah, yeah. Everything we make, it's not just a one, not just one way to fish that bait. We like to fish. And if I got a bait, I want two or three different things I can do with it. So I can have a jig on, use it as a jig trailer. I can flip it. I can throw it on a Carolina rig, or I can fish it weightless. There's just there's not anything that you know. It's not just one, one single way to flip a bait or one single way to fish it. So, so but that's kind of that's kind of all we got. Catch and problem. tackle. And our website is www.catchandtackle.com. So, um, and our email is uh, catch and tackle uh, 2019 at gmail.com if you have any questions or thoughts. And we're doing a special right now until probably the end of March. Uh, we've got $5 shipping on all our products. What we're going to do for COVID and everybody out there and kind of as a special till the end of that. If you order baits off of it, say if you order two packs of watermelon red weed monkeys and you order a pack of green pumpkin rock crawls, what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw in another pack of what you ordered the most of. So you would get, you know, if you order three packs of these, a pack of these and two packs of these, we're gonna give you another pack of these for free to cover that $5 shipping because we're all hurting because of COVID right now. Um, we've done some virtual shows and that's kind of like our, our show special right now it says five dollar shipping we offset that cost with a free pack of baits or if there's something you wanted to try there's a comment section just comment on say hey, i'd really like to try the, the money worm i know it's a good one or the hell not or any of those well we're more than happy to set it up but those are those are our baits those are the ones we we like to fish and how we like to fish them this one, I didn't show this one off throughout. This is the little crawl. And then this is smallmouth candy. It's yeah. the same way. Um, I like it on our little stand up head. Or if I'm going to throw a little jig, like a little quarter ounce, 3 16 like a bitsy jig, that's the trailer I use for a bitsy jig. And it, it does the same thing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to stand that jig up, blows your skirt out. It's just a, it's a dynamite little bait. And it, you know, it, it holds up pretty well. <clears throat> Our I already talked about the plastic. We had problems in the very beginning getting claws and stuff thrown off. So we, we worked on that quite a bit to where we got our plastic just the way we wanted it. That's really it. Anybody well, got any questions? Yeah. Fort Wayne show at the Coliseum? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is that the one that's went on for many years? And I'm going to say yes. This is the first time we've been um, invited to it. Um, we have our most favorite, our favorite shows, so um, we never did go up to Fort Wayne, always kind of headed south. Um, so, but yes, I'm gonna say that's the one. Yeah. It's the same people putting it on that's normally up there. It's usually the cabin 
and something show. Okay. But it's not named that this time, but it's the same. It's market, you know, uh, um, with the big market. It's like the All American Outdoor Expo. Yeah, and okay. they have one in, in uh, Ohio too. Okay. You know, so they, but it, it's not exactly the same thing, but it's the same. It's going to be similar. And, and I saw on, on some of the emails, on some information that we got, that it's $15 a ticket, but that goes for three days. So if you want to go for three days, you, you know, so. Yeah, there's. Um, there's which is, you can't do much for 15 bucks. No, no. no. And, and that's nice because if you get a late start, you, can. you know, you can go back the next day and, and he's still covered. So um, There's a lot of good vendors on there. I looked at the vendor list last night. It's, there's some cool stuff going to be there. We're pretty excited. Yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it. So. Should, be a, should be a really good show. Coliseum, it's nice. That's the end of the month. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Anybody else got questions? When you're, uh, like you're talking about the weed monkey there, you're... You're, you get it and you're not de- developing it and you change something a little bit here or there. You actually, I mean, you carve up your, I mean, how do you, you fish it and then say, well, if we took a little off here or we did that, I mean, mm-hmm. is that what you do? Or add a little here, a little more weight here? Or exactly. It, it was kind of the same thing of where the crawls and, and um, were coming off, the tentacles was coming off when the fish would, would grab on. So um, talking with the Tula Dye guy, he, figured out that add a little bit further back on the body and a little bit thicker and and you know I'm pulling pretty good now like Jimmy said bass comes along and grabs and you go set it, it, it'll probably nine out of ten times come off but um, and then like I said with um, some of the issues within the mold um, was wasn't setting up right so we, we kind of come up with the hook slot and, and uh, that covered two things it filled out the mold and it, mm-hmm. it, it, it gives a lot better hook penetration through Research and development is the best part. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what it was, really. Fishing it. Mm-hmm. Out, so. <laughs> well, I called in the day whenever we got this just the right class at the right. Dad and I were out fishing. I, I had caught two or three fish on the same bait without flipping it, flopping it, losing anything. I just immediately, I said, pulled out. I called Dad. I was like, run them because we got it. Mm-hmm. This will work. Yeah, yeah this, is, this is a bait we're really excited about. We're really happy with the way it turned out. One of our favorites. Oh, my favorite. Well, thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. We enjoyed it. Thank you. Appreciate you guys stopping in. Mm-hmm. Uh, remember to catch them at Fort Wayne here at the end of February. Um, or uh, catchemtackle.com. Catch oh. yeah. So, got you. So, appreciate that. That's that's interesting. I never. It's, oh, yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. A lot to it, yeah. So, yeah. Yes, so uh, next we got up uh, Jared from uh, J. Taylor Custom Rods. So he's uh, he's going. He makes uh, custom fly rods. So uh, some really cool stuff. Yep. I actually wasn't sure how many people would show up, so I brought a couple of personal rods, some stuff that I was working on right now, and uh, um, bought brought with me some uh, grass, some glass, and graphite, so that you can kind of tell the difference. Between Grass, of course, being bamboo and uh, fiberglass and, and graphite rods. So I just kind of brought a little bit of sampling of those different things just so we can kind of see the different materials and how they act. Um, so Charlie contacted me and asked me to just talk about different uh, talk about different uh, ways that I ways that I build. And I kind of got started in the whole custom rod thing. Um, trying to find a, uh, a ultralight rod because I'm, I'm a pan fisherman at heart and uh, couldn't find anything with the action that I wanted so I started talking with him and ended up or started talking with some friends and found out that there just wasn't what I was looking for in a rod so uh, ended up building building some stuff out of an old fly rod line because that was the action that I was looking for Anyway, to make a long story short, uh, not quite 10 years ago I started doing this and fly rods are where my passion's at, that and ultralight fishing. Um, I, I love bait fishing, I love artificial fishing for smallmouth. Smallmouth is my second favorite fish to catch. Um, 
And, and I'll leave to do that with my brother. I love taking my seven way down the White River and, and catching big smallies on streams. So anyway, um, does anybody have any questions about anything fly fishing related or anything like that? I, I don't know if any of you guys do any fly fishing or not. Do you tie your own flies? Uh, a little bit. I really don't have enough time to do it. I have friends that can do it and we just trade off stuff. It's a lot easier yeah. to do it. I do, I do tie a bunch of bluegill baits for myself. Mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine from uh, Alan Muey from Muey Jig, a a Baits. I, yeah, he taught me how to do it and I've been tying my own for a while now because he wanted me to leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, this, is, this is one, the butt section of a uh, rod that I'm actually putting some extra thread on doing a, a cross wrap. On, on this fly rod. This is a this is a fiberglass rod. Uh, I made the grip for this, and like I said, just doing some different work on the on the thread here. This is one of the fiberglass. This is an eight weight that I did and did some pyrography on the on the grip, the small mouth. That's a that's a fast, very actually extra fast action rod. There's another fiberglass rod that I did. Um, let's see if I can pull some of these parts out here. bronze colored rod is an extra fast action. It's one of the, my personal smallmouth rods. And it is a like I said it's extra fast action. I don't know if everybody out there on Facebook <laughs> may can see this. Some people just like casting with a faster rod. Um, if you're, it's a little bit more forgiving on timing. Um, some people, because you want to do this with a with a fly rod. A lot of people who are used to bait ca or using bait casters or whatever, they like that extra fast action so they can just kind of stop stop their cast immediately. They can pull back a little bit faster and they can get where they want to go a little bit faster. Um, on the opposite end of that spectrum, a lot of bamboo is more on the slower side. So you can, a lot of those guys will say you can eat a sandwich in between your back cast and your forecast. It's a lot, a lot different. It's more on the timing and um, professional casters can, can explain it a lot better than I can. Um, most of it's personal preference. Um, there are people who would prefer to have a slower casting stroke. Um, some people on the faster side. A lot of times a, a, a fast rod, if your timing is good, is easier to cast dry flies with. Um, but a lot of times, most guys kind of lean in that medium fast range. And that's that's probably where they should be. Where should a beginner start? And with which of those three rods? I, I, I learned on fiberglass. Uh, 
um, you know, like the old Wonder Rods and such way back in the in the in the 70s and, and even in the early 80s, they still they were still around. Um, that made me work on my timing, and it made me a better caster now. But that moderate fast or medium fast taper is usually a lot easier for individuals to learn on. Do you have a length you prefer on your small mouth rod? It depends on canopy. I mean, okay. if, if you're if you're in a tube, it's it's really hard to get that nine and a half footer out there. Um, my uh, my glass small mouth rod is an eight foot nine, and I can get I can still get a lot of distance with mm -hmm. it. I can still do some seventy five plus foot casts with it. Um, and for for me, that's really good. I mean, there's a lot of guys out there that can cast basically the whole line out, which is somewhere between. 80 and 100 feet, depending on the, on the fly line. That's not me. I'm not that good of a caster. Um, but I'm pretty accurate in that, up to about 75 foot I know a lot of the, the, the bag, bag caster, the bass fishing, mm -hmm. this one rod. Does you, do you lose much sensitivity with pieces? Put in the, no, the there's, there's, um, There's, there's a fallacy about that. Um, you do lose a, a teeny bit of sensitivity in a multi-piece rod, but the construction of those has come so far that it's not nearly what it was in the, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and even in the 90s. That They have come leaps and bounds in the multi-piece rods. I'm, I'm building a, a, a three-piece travel rod for a gentleman right now. It's a, it's a seven six musky stick, and um, of course with musky you don't really need a lot of sensitivity, but it is there, it is there, and I don't just do flat rods; I do do all types of rods. Um, anyway, the uh, um, so as far as the construction goes, basically I start off with. Uh, just a, a, this is a blank, fly rod blank. This particular one is a seven foot, maybe seven six, three weight rod. And I will um, flex test this, make sure that it's good, find out what the straightest axis and also where the spine of that, that is so that I can work off of that where I'm gonna put my guides. Um, and then I'll take pieces of cork and turn the cork on a, on a lathe after I've glued them up and basically made a stick, made a stick of cork, glue it up on a lathe, or glue it up on a mandrel, turn it to whatever shape. There's hundreds of different shapes, probably 10 that are used pretty often on grip and buy um, our real seats and, um, and the guides and, and guides you can do it's just like bass guides they have everything from um, uh, an agate guide which is stone cut stone that's been polished and then a silver or uh, other kinds of metals usually they they do like a stainless, but sometimes they put them in sterling silver guides. Those can be thirty to fifty dollars a piece. Um, it's, but it's more presentation pieces, um, and and they go, they can go up from there. I mean, there are certain there are certain ones that are even higher than that. Um, and then all different kinds of guides, and the same like I said, the same thing with bass guides. Some guides use silicon. Carbide guides, SIC guides. Um, there are um, all different kinds of ceramics, like they do on, on just regular fishing rods. Um, anyway, you can you can go 
titanium frames, stainless frames, um, there's, there's all different sorts, all different sorts. And they even have a, a titanium uh, recoil guide like they do on some of the, some of the bass rods. They've got their flexible titanium guides. Um, some guys like those. Jury's still out for me. I have them on a couple of my rods. Um, they have their place. I'll say that. Sometimes I, I don't care for what they do. But anybody, anybody have any questions about anything? Uh, yeah. You mentioned three, a three weight, a seven, an eight. What's the range on weights? Okay. Um, actually, they go from I, from a zero to. I've seen is like a 15. Um, and that means stiff and big and... Yeah, um, so basically the, the whole purpose of a fly rod is to cast the line. Um, where in conventional fishing you're trying to cast a lure or bait out. With a fly rod, the weight is in the line itself. So it's a grain based weight system that is really, really, really complicated. Not really, but it is to try to explain in a setting like this. Um, it's with 30 feet of line out. The weight of that is basically broke down into a chart and says that so many grains is a five weight rod. So many grains of line. 30 feet of line is a seven weight. So you have a weight weight to that that's and it's assigned a certain a certain number. Um, most of the time most bass or I'm sorry most trout fishermen will fish somewhere between a four and a six weight. That's kind of a general really really general rule if you're fishing for very very small trout in Blue Ribbon streams in the middle of the Carolinas or something like that, you might drop down into a one or a two weight if you're catching little brook trout that are just a couple inches long. Um, and then from that, larger weights, I usually use, like I said, about a seven-ish weight for my smallmouth fishing. Um, largemouth, eight, nine. Same with like bonefish, if you were doing some offshore stuff, maybe seven, eight, nine, depending on what your casting ranges were. Um, and like I said, they go up from there. Uh, pike, musky fishermen, usually in that nine, 10, sometimes 11 weight range. And where you go up to swordfish and sharks in, in a 15 weight. So it just kind of, just runs the gamut all the way. Just about anything that you can fish for with conventional tackle, almost anything. And it's a lot of fun. It's just, for me. It's uh, the the rhythmic casting is therapeutic, and that's one of the reasons why I like the bowl so much. Just even if it's even if I don't catch anything, I'm still having a good time. What's the normal leader length of leader that's on there? It it depends on what your uh, what your target species is. fish like bluegill. Um, but if you get really finicky fish, some, some people fish with like a 12 foot mono leader or a, a flora leader. Um, for really finicky trout that have seen everything and they're really, really squeaky. Is it the same deal as like bass fish? You want mono for your dry flies to float and flora yeah. for everything sinks? Yeah. Um, and, and there are specialty lines, you know, you got floating lines and sinking lines and the actual fly line itself. Um, what weight would you use on your bluegill rod? I, I use a three or four. Um, I've got some fives that I'll use, but most of the time I've, um, that's kind of my, my niche is my four weights. And I've got a cup that, that whitens my next bluegill rod. Um, it's from a, a friend of mine in, uh, in Livingston, uh, Montana, he started a rod company, and 
and uh, that was one of his prototypes that had you know was playing around. The same thing on your leader, like a six pound or four pound line for your leader. Uh, you well, I, I usually go a little bit wide. I'll go uh, usually a two. Really? Yeah, yeah. like one and a half or a two. Mm -hmm. um, I like really light line, also, especially when I'm bluegill fishing. I I I want the I want to feel the fish. A lot more fun. Yeah. yeah. So how long? I mean, I know you put a lot of time in there. Sure. Um, a, a, a typical build, I'll have somewhere in the neighborhood, and, I, and I'm slower than some guys as far as my how fast I can turn stuff up. Um, most of my fly rods, I'm in that six to eight hour range of actual hands-on time. Um, and there's dry times with brews and um, finished coats and epoxy over thread coats and stuff like that. But most of my hands-on time is somewhere in that six to eight hours. If I'm doing if I'm doing fancy drifts, I might we might add another hour to that. If I'm doing cross wraps on stuff, some of those can take eight or ten hours. Um, just yeah, it just depends on what what the customer wants and what I want to do with it. So. I know there's probably so many different varieties of price ranges, but mm -hmm. kind of what's an average price range that you would charge um, to build a rod? On the very bottom end, we're in that very bottom end, right around three and a quarter, and I've built some that were over a thousand. It just depends on components. I mean, a lot of times when you get into the when you get into a lot of the salt water stuff, you get in titanium guides and titanium reel seats, and the prices go up. Uh, um, some of those uh, just the reel seats cost as much as what you might pay for a bass rod. You know, hundred plus dollars for just the seat. So yeah, it, it can get it can get expensive really quickly. How long do they last? How long do they last? As long as as long as somebody takes care of them, they last your lifetime and your kids' lifetime. I mean, it's, it's what reel would you recommend putting on your rod? It just uh, it depends on what what your target species is. If if you're on light fish, basically just some anything. Feel good in your hand and balances the rod out okay is it's pretty much a line holder. If you get into um, start getting into fish that are going to make big runs, uh, bonefish, uh, big monster red down on the coast, then you need to start looking into something that's got a lot better, a lot better drag system on it because you're going to be you're going to be spinning out drag. And that, you know, the, the fly reels are, are not cheap. Good fly reels aren't cheap. Um, it's not it's not uncommon to spend four or five hundred dollars on a reel. So on the fish, on the higher end reels, I should say. It's the biggest fish you've landed on one of your rods. Um, Six pound, twelve ounce. No, oh. was that six four? Six four small mouth up in Skagamog. I think it's probably my best mm -hmm. on one of mine. I mean, like small mouth because I don't count, mm -hmm. you know, catfish and stuff like that. But um, and and I get pictures from customers that make me really, really sick to my stomach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, pike that are 40 plus inches. Mm -hmm. um, I ha not a fly rod, but one of, one of my customers, um, he caught a, uh, it was a 48 inch muskie on a, on a medium powered bass rod. <laughs> 
Big Time Fest. We brought it in, and it's fun. I, you know, I get one guy that shoots me pictures of a, he caught a 20-ish pound carp on a two-weight rod that I built him, which is like, it's like an ultra rod. You can almost yeah. bend it in half anyway. And uh, so he sent me pictures of that. He said, man, this thing's really super durable. I said, don't put it. <laughs> it's not made for that, but I'm glad that it, I'm glad that it survived. Anybody else got any questions? Yeah. All right, thanks. Sure. Yeah. Thank so, you. Appreciate so we're just, um, uh, feel free to hang out and ask the guys any questions you got here. Um, hang out. Uh, if anybody's interested, I do have uh, this design. It has, a, it has both rods on here. <laughs> so I'm printing those up. I get to pick up a blank here if you're interested for, for 10 bucks. Print those off. Just uh, hit me up afterwards and we'll get you fixed up. Uh, so just uh, hang out, ask some questions, and come up and look at some of your stuff. You know, uh, um, these, these grips are just really awesome here, Gary. Thanks, man. So uh, you burn that yeah. by hand with a burn. Yeah, with a wood burning tool. So you gotta see these up close because these are just, these are amazing. It's just, it's really good craftsmanship there. So. I appreciate it. <laughs> so thanks a lot for coming, and uh, and uh, keep uh, if you don't follow me on Instagram or Gank Robot Designs uh, on Facebook and Instagram because uh, I plan on doing uh, this kind of thing with different topics once or twice a month here. So uh, keep it short and sweet, casual, nothing fancy, um, and just learn some uh, stuff about some some cool things. So we'll have a different topic next time around. So we got a couple in, uh, in the works. We got a, a backpacking one, uh, backpacking in Indiana here, as well as the Appalachian Trail. We have two people talk about any of those. And um, I've got one, I'm a caver, so I got one coming up with uh, on caving in Indiana, wild caving. So, uh, um, and got a couple other ones in the works too. So um, if you don't follow on Facebook, Instagram, do that and we'll catch up. Thanks a lot for coming. Have a great night and uh, stay warm. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you. Yeah, I hear how you turn out of the lane because I'm very I know I've been some wood.